Welcome to the review you have been waiting for. The brand new EOTech ELR Mod 2.0 Thermal Clip-On. Now I'm gonna run this review just like I would wanna see it. We're gonna do a ton of footage through the unit itself, through a day optic. We're gonna look at steel targets all the way out to a thousand yards. We're gonna look at animals out to a thousand yards. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like as its own dedicated weapon mounted thermal optic. Let's jump in. Guys, I've had this unit for coming up on, I think, three or four weeks now. No actual hunting with it yet as it's deer season. Can't do that where I'm at. That being said, I've spent a ton of time with it. I've spent a ton of practice with it. Almost like practice before you hunt with it can be useful. As you see it set up here, I do not shoot with it through this gun, but I threw it on the six arc. Again, another long range capable cartridge. Certainly can touch things out to a thousand yards, no problem running 103s at uh, roughly 2,700 feet per second. A little bit different than what you're gonna see in the footage as it's on my bolt gun. Here, I've got it on a six arc, very capable long range hunting cartridge. Certainly uh, comfortable taking shots at distance. So I threw the thermal clip on to kind of run that for this video. A couple things to go through really quickly. First off, the unboxing. The boxing, the presentation was really good. EOTech did a great job comes in a hard case. And the most notable thing that really stood out to me in the boxing is it comes with a one sheeter, almost like an instruction manual, kind of a, a cheat sheet, if you will, of how the unit functions, different menu items and whatnot. So you're not gonna see me go through a ton of that in this review. Candidly, when I watch reviews, I get a little sick of that. They go into a ton of detail there where they're basically just reading from the manual. EOTech and Theon did a great job with this unit as far as that quick key guide. It, it, I've referenced it more times than I can tell you. Literally later in the video, you'll see me reading from it as I'm trying to figure out how to zero this thing. So really, really well done, really good job there. I've really enjoyed that. The other thing that really jumped out to me when I got out of the box is just how small the unit is. I've messed with the Mod 1.5, I think is what they landed on calling that one. It, it's substantially taller, guys. Uh, it, it's it's a very tall unit, which makes it hard if you're going to mount weapon mounted rangefinders. You've got to get a pretty tall diving board to be able to clear that. Not the issue with this. I've had a ton of luck. I just couldn't believe how compact it was. Uh, very solid unit. The first unit had a plastic focus ring and it was located up front. The focus ring on this one is back here. You'll see me navigating the menus, guys. The menus are super intuitive really easy to use, really easy to function. You just roll it to the right to go through the menu and you press in to select what you wanna use. Once you're in that sub menu setting, you click to select and again, just rotate to adjust. Super intuitive, super easy to use. The focus knob is back here so it's closer to the shooter. Love that, love that change they made. Uh, I'm not the tallest gentleman. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gentleman's uh, five foot eight. And so tougher for me to get out and, and reach uh, up on that focal knob. But the thing I noticed in using this unit, really guys, from 400 to 1,000 yards, once you set your focus uh, correctly, you I, I really have not had to adjust. Next up, the weight. It's two pounds, two ounces. Super light. I was expecting kind of a a chunk as you read about some of these other thermal clip-on units. Really not enough good things to say about the footprint of this unit, how they packaged it, uh, the you know lens cover and all, everything. They've got two options on the side for Picatinny rails if you do want to mount a couple other things. I'm really pleased with that. I'm also really, really, really pleased with the way they've done the actual clip-on. I think the first version had some sort of kind of tightening screw scenario. Again, I don't own that unit. I've messed with it a couple times, but this is, is just a simple clamp in uh, adjustable to your, you know, Picatinny rail. I've been really impressed. I've not seen any zero shift, any collimation issues whatsoever uh, with tier A glass that I've been running. I just, it, it's been really easy to use. And, and like I said, really intuitive. The warranty. 
the warranty on this thing blows my mind. Now, I'm happy to hear it with what you're spending on a unit like this, right? This is a top tier unit. I would hope they'd back their product. Most consumer driven thermals have a three to five year warranty on them. Most military thermals only have a one year warranty. What EOTech and Theon did with this, guys, there's a 10 year warranty, 10 years. I asked Preston at Strictly Offensive Kit, Preston said, that warranty is transferable. So if you go to sell this unit two, three years down the road, secondary market, and you're buying it, and you know you sell it at year three, you have seven years, the new buyer will have seven years remaining on, on that warranty. To me, that just screams the quality they put into this thing. If they're willing to back it for a 10 year period of time, that's exceptional. Really, really pleased with that. Made me feel really good as someone who was buying this unit to say, hey, they're standing behind the product. Awesome. Couple thoughts before we jump into the actual footage. Again, guys, I did a ton of footage. This is gonna be a little bit longer video than I would normally do, but when you're gonna spend the kind of money that you're gonna spend on a unit like this, I wanted to see as much footage as I could possibly see. So that's what I try to put in this review. So again, in the very beginning, forgive me guys, I've, I've bought, as you can see, daddy bought a new microphone, okay? So audio quality from here, henceforth, is going to be much better. It's a little challenging that when we're looking at the steel targets, the wind was kicking like crazy, it was cold, I didn't have an external mic like this, problem solved. So stay with me during that part, but you'll notice in the second half, I'm using the new mics. Audio quality is fantastic. Uh, you're welcome. Here we are, day two of the coolest kit I've ever owned, piece of kit I've ever owned in the EOTech XELR or XLR Mod 2.0, super cool. Do some quick trigger cam footage showing you guys uh, how neat this thing is. So anyway, we're at five power now. Uh, real quick, we have a tangent theta five by 25. So super, super top tier glass. This is at five power. Uh, so field of view, you know, eh. I mean, that's, that's just part of it though, right? We're not really, you're trading a lot of things for field of view. This is at a hundred yards to get a uh, good understanding <laughs> that piece of paper is probably, I don't know, 12 inches by 18 inches, if I had to guess, to put in perspective. So if you're like hunting coyotes, I mean, you're going to be limited on range with the scope this uh, zoomed in uh, at five, at the base power being five. So let's take it on down to the next real distance here. Really quickly here, kind of seeing the whole field start at the closest one you got. 100 yard back report on the again we're on five power on the scope currently 100 yard back report 300 yard massive target okay i don't know how big that is five power 400 yard you can see all three targets pretty well you can see the two very very well 600 yard target array you can see every target there glowing Incredibly. And again, these are non-heated steel, guys. I have not heated or treated this in any way. 800 yards. We'll zoom in later and, and get some more clarity to that. 1,000 is in this, like, shadow land in the back. So I don't think that steel's getting much sunlight, and therefore it's not uh, showing up very well today. 900-yard target set. Clearly see the silhouette in the 25 by 12 target there the wide rectangle 700 yard same story guys you see that really really well um the 25 by 12 lows and then that far on the right is a one moa meaning it's a seven by seven inch plate really exceptional results I'm, I'm very pleased with that and then a 500 yard target array here with uh, various sizes uh, of hanging steel targets so again not heated not treated Five power, if you were out hunting in the field and something alive, coyote walked in front of you, man, it's gonna glow like a daggone lightsaber. So this this is exceptional and uh, really, really pleased with the performance of the EOTech XLR Mod 2.0. Very cool. Or 400 yard target set. You can see the 12 by 10, the eight by five, and that's either Six by six or eight by eight, I'm not really sure. 400 yards, <clears throat> 20 power, and then move it up to 25. 
Sorry, the last one might have been 22. Yes, the last one was 22. 25. Well, I'm going to go back down to 20. Here we go. Okay. That is 20 power at 400 yards. Really good results. Okay, folks, here we are on the 500 yard target set. These glow, I mean, really, really well. I'm, I'm very impressed. We're on 20 power on our scope. Uh, that plate, I believe, is a 10 by 10, making it two them away at this distance. And then you have a different array of different targets, a bowling pin. You can see that's clearly like a bowling pin style target. And then on the far right here, I believe it's a one MOA, five by five inch. So 500 yards, that's 20 power. Let's zoom in to 25. There you go. Man, that is crisp. That image is incredible. I am more and more impressed with this. EOTech XLR Monty Point Out 600 yards. <laughs> now, that wide rectangle you see on the far right is a 25 inch by 12 inch target. You have the target set, so you can kind of see accordingly. That smallest one here is a 6 by 6 inch plate, making it a one MOA target, and you can distinctly see where that strap is and where the steel of it is. I mean, this is uh, really, really great. Uh, exceptional detection. These are non-heated steel. I came out here, it's 42 degrees, and wow, that's impressive. This is at 20 power. Let's zoom it up to 25. There you go. 600 yards. Really good. Here we are at 700 yards. Again, on the left, you can see the 25 by 12 inch plate, clear as day on 20. Zoom. And then on the far right, you see the one MOA plate at 700 yards. You can see it clear as day. You could certainly take a shot at that uh, under these conditions at 42 degrees, non-heated steel. This is uh, impressive. Let's zoom up 25. <laughs> wow. Really, really good. <clears throat> 700 yards. 7 by 7 inch plate. 25 by 12. Impressive. There are three or four little targets there on the left, kind of hanging. Uh, but again, you can really uh, see very, very well, distinctly see the 12 by 10 uh, target set. This one here, actually, it's probably bigger than that on the longer range. That small one there is an 8 by 8 inch plate at 800 yards, making it a one MOA target. That thing you can see as clear as day. That's incredible. This is the 25 inch by 12 inch uh, rectangle and turning rectangle. And man, that's uh, tar that's target set at 800 yards of 20 power. Here it is at 25 power. Really, really, really quality results. 800 yards, eight by eight inch plate right here. 25 by 12. Wow. 900 yards. We are on 20 power on our scope. 25 inch by 12 inch plate. An Iron Maiden. Uh, these are bigger than typical Ipsic. But then right there, and you saw me hit it on video the other day. <clears throat> right here, you have a 9 by 9, 1 MOA target set at 900 yards. You can see it, no problem. That's really, really good. Now, I'm getting a little bit of glare when I go up, so I'm trying to keep it at the lower of the target base here, but man, that's that's just really exceptional stuff. Now, let's zoom up to 25. Here we are, 25 zoom on Tangent Theta behind the EOTech XLR 2.0 on a 25 by 12 inch plate on the left, a 9 by 9 in the middle, and a Iron Maiden silhouette on the right. Actually, let's go all the way down. So I'm going to go down to five power. Okay. So everyone see a target set on the far left. We've got 600 in the middle, 300 to the uh, northwest there up in the caddy corner. You got 800 to the right, 900, and then to the far right, 700. Let's juggle through some palette options. So here we are on white hot, obviously. Black hot. And then this is an edge detection. Scroll through those again, white hot, 
black eye edge detection. Now let's zoom in and do that. So here we go, 10 power. That's 400 and 600 yard target sets. Let's do the same thing, white hot. Black hot edge detection. You can see those targets glowing in that. That's neat. Lastly, let's just zoom in, just see what kind of, if you had a Kyle target, 25 power zoom here. White hot. Black hot. Edge detection. All right, let's do it again. White hot. Black hot. Clearly see those one MOA targets. Edge detection. Very cool. One more time. 700, 900 yards. White hot. Black hot. Edge detection. You had multiple whole pack of coyotes out in the field. White hot. Black hot. Edge detection. To me, this is where the edge detection really shows its value in salt. Is if you're trying to scan a field and and need really a kind of a outline and glow of what's out there. This is this is your go-to. But for me, I run I coyote hunt at white hot and man clarity of that on unheated steel is just exceptional. EOTech, XLR, XELR, whatever you want to call it, Mod 2.0. Impressive. What's up? We are here today at a private range. The only thing I really haven't filmed yet is live animals. Now, I plan to have plenty of hunting footage uh, as quickly as possible, but uh, until then, I thought I would get a little footage today. So, what you are looking at is pretty insane. Uh, I'm gonna lower it down. It, it, when you get up in that sun glare, it really impacts it. So is if you see up on the horizon there, those are horses, okay? One, two, three. Now we have bolt back, no mag, no ammunition, nothing uh, putting anyone at risk here, any animal at risk rather. And, uh, but as I pan this horizon, I thought I would show you, this is on five power. So again, on five power, uh, these results are pretty good until you realize how far these horses are. So with our Raptor MRF XE, let's go ahead and hold down and get an exact range. 963 yards. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, 963. My dope, by the way, would be 7.3 mils, but 963 yards on five power. Now I'm gonna zoom up just so you can kind of tell. I'm gonna go a little lower so you can really get that dynamic. It's 45 degrees out here. I am blown away by how much better this thing works in colder weather. Obviously, I know I shouldn't be, but I thought it was really good in the 80 degree temps the other day, but at 45 degrees, holy moly, this is fantastic. So. We are at five power. I'm gonna zoom to 12. <clears throat> there we are at 12. At again, 963 yard horses. We're just up a little bit. I'm gonna go to 20. <clears throat> We're at 20. And then 25. Now again, you're getting a little white offset because we're focused up here and you can see the tractor go by. So I'm gonna go back to 20, 12, and back down to five. The other thing you'll notice, I really don't need to adjust my focus at all from five power to all the way up to 25 power. Um, pretty impressive ordeal there, just kind of scanning the field here. I'm gonna do a couple changes. So five power, let's uh, let's change the color palette here, or the uh, engagement there. Black hot, edge detection at 963 yards. Again, 
white hot on five power, black hot on five power, edge detection on five power. 970, I don't know if they moved or what. <clears throat> we go white hot, black hot, edge detection on 20 power, white hot, black hot, edge detection on 20 power. So I'm gonna go white hot, black hot, edge detection. 963 yard horses, white hot, black hot, edge detection, back to white. Five power, 963 yards, really darn impressive. This is too, it's just not coming through in the image, trigger cam. Um, again, 900, 964 yards, this one's closer to us. So here we go, white hot, five power, white hot, black hot, edge detection. Again, white hot, boy how cool, you can really see the outline of that archway, the wood and the different heated sides of it really shows the <clears throat> dynamic contrast there, that's really cool. White hot, black hot, edge detection, again white hot, we can see the power lines even. Black hot, same with that. Edge detection. 964 yards there. 970-ish yards there. This is uh, five power ELR on livestock. Really impressive stuff. How cool. Those horses are at 968, five power, 25 power. Pop the thermal off. <clears throat> Still on 25 power. Just parallax. 968 yards, all the way down to five power. Now back one more time for good measure because this is super cool. <clears throat> bada boom, bada bing. This is on five power, black hot, edge detection, white hot. I'm gonna adjust parallax back to where it needs to be for the thermal and then zoom all the way into 25. Wow, this is so cool. <laughs> Quick little demonstration, you notice I, uh, outside of adjusting the parallax when I put the thermal clip on, on from five power to 25 power, I don't need to adjust the focus, which is really nice and should make for a uh, quick, agile system. All right, folks, here we are. <clears throat> Let's give this a go. Again, please uh, be patient with me. I knew people would wanna see this in the dedicated clip-on mode as the ELR Ma 2 has the option of using it as a dedicated weapon mounted optic. So really quickly, just wanted to take you guys through some things. And again, please forgive here. This is the first time I've tried using this phone camera set up here. This is different, uh, but we are at a range and you can see the reticle there in red pointing at the 300 yard backer board and the 300 yard steel target to the right. That far backer board that I'm now pointing at with the reticle is at 400 yards. So uh, again, 200, 300, 400, and then the hillside uh, picking things up nicely. Now the sun is directly in our eye. So you can see here at 100 yards, I have two thermal, uh, Actually, they're two foot warmers is what they are. Two, uh, set, two different foot warmers stapled to a cardboard backer. And then you've got 200 yard steel, 300 yard steel, and a 400 yard 
backer board. Pretty clear, impressive. I was concerned, I grabbed my 3X uh, magnifier. I've got an EOTech 5X and a, a cheaper uh, Vortex 3X. I didn't think I'd be able to see this, but if you have the right, if you have it set up close enough to the shooter's eye, it, it's clear. I mean, it's crystal clear. I was really impressed with it. Uh, as a dedicated weapon mounted optic. So we can quickly kind of go through some menus. You can change your reticle here. White hot, black hot, edge detection. And then I'm gonna just click through some menus for some fun here. So let's see here, we can do, we can up here, we can nuke it. Um, what's that? Oh, this gives me the option of some of the photo and video recording options. I've not messed with that a ton yet. Um, whoops, nuke it in here, go back to white high. So let's go to, we can nuke it, we can change our reticle. Uh, you can change, and again, guys, I'm staring at a phone here, so forgive me, have patience with me as I do this. This is the color, red, black, white, or polarity. I tried all three. I like the uh, the red the best. It shows up the best in my opinion. So I'm gonna leave it in that. This gives me reticle choices, so I can go mill dot. More of a grid. Again, I can't see this very well, guys. I can add in stuff later. More of a traditional reticle. I don't know what this one is. I can't really tell. And then across, which is what I was running earlier. And then, or have it off. So again, mill dot. I'm gonna run cross just because if I'm shooting this in a weapon mounted configuration, I am likely doing zero to 200 yard stuff. So as you can see from 100 out to 400 plus yards, this thing is crisp. You set the focus and you're, you're cooking. You're good to go. I'm really pleased with the eye relief on it. And like I said, if it's set to the shooter's eye in appropriate distance, I thought I'd need a magnifier. You do not need a magnifier to use this. Just for kicks and grins, I'm gonna see how much luck we have. Let's see if we can actually zero this thing. I don't have a butt stock on here. I mean, this is not ideal zeroing conditions because I'm trying to get the best thing for filming, but you know, heck, why not? All right, so I'm gonna send one here. Now let's check the paper weapon mounted or clip on. Uh, this enables uh, stadiometric data on the display to allow the user to estimate the distance of a standing man or vehicle, which I don't need because I've got my mount, weapon mounted rangefinder. And then return and exit. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go to adjust, okay? I am for the center of that Square, so I can't see the adjustments I'm making at the top. So let's see how this rolls. Click. Okay, it's moving up. I need to go down. Yep, I need to go to the right. Now, unlike a day optic where you move the hole to you, 
on a thermal, you move your reticle to the hole. So let's, all right, let's see what we get here. We'll go exit. All right, let's try another one. Here we go, sending at 100 yards. Safety on. Either way, you guys are getting the idea of how this works. Pretty simple and straightforward. If I could actually look through the scope, I could do this in probably two or three shots. Okay, I'm almost in the foot warmer, so I'm gonna call that good on screen, but that should give you an idea of how to zero this as weapon mounted optic. Pretty, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, really, pretty easy. So all in all, what do I think? Well, first off, I've been pleasantly surprised with everything so far. And like I mentioned in the first video, guys, I've, I've had dedicated thermal optics I have eye rays, I have pulsars, I have the halo. Those are good units for what they are, but they just did not do what I needed and wanted this to do, which is long range application. So, so far I'm really, really pleased. I can't wait to get out and, and do some actual coyote hunting with it. I've put it through the ringer as again, I've been practicing. Practice? You talking about practice? Yes, I'm talking about practice. I've been practicing with this unit, getting comfortable with it, feeling great about how it functions out in the field. So all in all, I, I'm, I'm head over heels. Again, I've been disappointed with every thermal I've owned to date in some capacity. I have not been disappointed with this yet. Now, let's talk turkey. What is this top tier thermal imaging gonna cost you? As you just saw, we saw those horses out at a thousand yards glowing. It was incredible. I mean, I'm just blown away by the capability. We saw those one MOA targets out to 900 yards. I hit one of them in the first video on my third shot. Now, I didn't see any report on the hillside, so I was just changing my wind hold every time and smoked it. But super impressed with that. This unit, MSRPs, for $16,500. $16,500, that's a lot of money. My first car was a $1,400 Nissan Sentra that I literally drove till the wheels fell off. When I was looking at this, I was comparing what I was getting to what's available in the market. I'm not gonna go super deep on this today, guys, but just to quickly understand the level of thermal we're talking about. You have multiple units in the zero to $7,000 range. IRA Hybrid, Pulsar Krypton, Pulsar Krypton 2, Super Hogster. All of those units, I think are really good units. I've used all but one of them so far. What I'll tell you is they are really good units for what they are up to a certain optical magnification, daytime optic mag behind it. All right, and you're talking guys, max, max on most of those 10X max. Meaning once you go past 10X optical zoom, you're you're done. I mean, it's so glitchy, you cannot tell what's going on. In the video you just watched, the only thing hindering all the way out to 25 power was the trigger cam. That trigger cam frustrated me because it stole so much image quality from what was actually happening, what I was actually seeing behind the scope at 25 power. It, it was exceptional, guys. I, I'm, I'm like, I cannot wait to stretch this thing out to a thousand yards and beyond. It may not come through in the trigger cam footage, but I'm telling you, the images are pristine. From 5 to 20x, this EOTech ELR Mod 2 held the exact same image from 5 power to 20 power on the scope behind it. Exact same. 20 plus, it looked like the best 320 thermal I've ever seen. I did throw one scope behind it that had 28 X, 28 zoom, and I saw a door, I could have drawn you a picture of a door, a doorknob, and the window of a house at 2,200 yards. It, it's exceptional. Speaking of how do you find units like this, wasn't easy. Guys, check out Strictly Offensive Kit. Preston and his team over there have done a fantastic job for me. They did calls with me, they answered emails, they really helped educate me on this next level thermal game and some of the other components and tools like the weapon mounted range finders and things that go along with it. If you are interested in this and thinking about buying a unit someday, reach out to Strictly Offensive Kit. They did a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. 
learned about what I was into, what I was interested in, and helped educate me on the gear that could support that. Check them out at strictlyoffensivekit.com, and I'll also put a link to their website, their contact information in the description. Give them a call. But what's this really compared to? So you've got those lower tier, lower cost optics that I just mentioned. Then you've got the next level stuff, the Hiss XLRs, the iNods, those are thermal cooled units. They're phenomenal. You can see vapor trail. Those are $85,000 to $100,000 units, guys. Not feasible for me, unless you all want me to start a Patreon and chip in and I'm happy to buy one. <laughs> okay, but until that happens, I don't know. So really what we're talking about is that 10 to $20,000 range. And in that 10 to $20,000 range, all the homework I did basically came down to two or three contenders. The TIG IR, the EOTech ELR, and the Voodoo M. TIG doesn't have a focus knob. TIG was kicked out for me over that alone. So really it came down to the EOTech and the Voodoo M. Now, the Voodoo M works with Trace IR, which means you can put your weapon mounted range finder, laser down range, and it will literally show you a holdover in your unit. That is cool. The Voodoo M is $20,000. The other thing that I noticed when I was doing research on it is pretty much everyone that had run a Voodoo M and the EOTech side by side gave the EOTech a slight advantage on actual image quality. That, it was cheaper. I could find one. That made my decision for me. And again, I don't think you could go wrong with either of those, those units, but when you're talking about this next tier, really a top tier consumer unit for long range thermal hunting and shooting. That's $16,500, a lot of money, uh, but I don't think it's crazy, crazy unreasonable. The other piece is now the Mod 1.5, you could probably buy cheaper. So if you don't mind a much larger, bulkier, chunkier, and kind of weird focal knob thing going on the front, and you don't need a dedicated weapon mounted optic because it doesn't have that capability, that might be a good option for you. I don't know what those are going for used. I would say you probably snag one of those for mid 13s, maybe even high 12s, depending on uh, who's selling them. So all in all, super, super, super cool unit. Can't wait. I'm gonna give a lot more footage as we go, a lot more hunting footage, and I'll keep you guys in the loop of what I think of the product. But so far, A++. Hey guys, really appreciate you watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We're gonna be doing a lot more video content. I have a ton of videos planned. I'm kinda in a video mood for some reason. I don't know, you know, I kinda went on a two year hiatus. Well, I'm back. So, be looking out for the next couple of videos coming out. We got a bunch of really, really fun stuff. We're gonna be doing a ton of product reviews on products that I've, I am using, that I find helpful, that you may not know anything about. So either way, a lot of really fun content coming out. Please stick around, like and subscribe. Please share these videos. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching the review of the EOTech ELR Mod 2.0 Thermal Clip On. See ya. Practice? You talking about practice? Yes, I'm talking about practice. <laughs>